it's the Benazir Bhutto assassination um, that's forced you to review your security arrangements? Yeah, in fact, in fact, uh, nationally, my friends, even even some of my friends within the ruling party, have advised me to step up. They're not uh, casting aspersions against uh, the the uh, ruling party, but then mm. they, they may be individuals mm. Mm. Uh, who felt uh, clearly threatened. Uh, just just take, to take the case of judiciary, mm. you are dealing with some you know very known billionaires uh, with huge operations mm. in the country, mm. and uh, take the issue of uh, the Atantuya Mongolian murder case. Uh, these are huge problems. Mm. Uh, that you take up at uh, risk. Mm. Okay. okay. But you're confident you seem to be succeeding on the judicial front. Um, are you seriously expecting to be called as a witness, or do you think that's. Uh, well, until yesterday, the the, the, they don't yeah. seem to uh, be too, um, opt I mean, too keen mm. in having me. Mm. And they seem to now to try and restricting the terms of reference. Mm. Now, we, none of us, including the Bar Council, are too optimistic about the mm. outcome. Mm. Uh, but, but I think the, the general view is that it is uh, at least uh, um, alert the general Malaysian public. Mm. Uh, there's something rotten, mm. which we have said uh, decades ago, but now at least is in evidence. Mm. Uh, people see the video tape being played on the national media. Mm. Mm. Uh, they have seen the s chief judge uh, embracing this lawyer and holidays in New Zealand. Mm. Uh, they have seen this testimony of this um, lawyer saying that he brought uh, uh, this gaming tycoon mm. and attorney general for holidays in Italy. Mm. Can you repeat it? And now it is in the public purview. Mm. Uh, mm. Yeah. But yeah. will I get the uh, justice? I don't believe I'll get justice under this system. Mm. Okay, you're and you're I'm, I'm enjoying the fun. Yep. Are you confident? You're, you're fairly certain the government will call an early election ahead of uh, what is it, April 15th yes, when yes, you're free to stand. Yes. You're fairly certain yeah. about that. But then you'll probably take the by-election route. Yes. Which is actually in a way better strategically. Mm. For example, I will announce 20 seat, 20 seats. Yep where I have the option. So people are actually, actually voting for that candidate and for me. Okay. Uh, okay. Perhaps in closing, to go back to the opening question about your message to Hong Kong, um, you've been talking here privately to businessmen about Sharia finance, but also, um, also about the subprime issue. Um, firstly, on Islamic finance, what, in, in, in fairly straightforward terms, what is your message to them as Hong, Hong Kong develops this hunger um, for this alternative stream of finance? Well, people are looking at the $1 trillion in the Middle East, uh, and $80, billion ringgit, uh, $80 million uh, uh, prospect of, of uh, funds to be channeled to the Islamic instruments, so there are. And I think uh, the, the authorities here, of course, to make the necessary regulatory, uh, legal uh, and regulatory arrangement to attract these investments. But I would certainly call upon the Hong Kong authorities to uh, look at it uh, and, 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 and um, true to Hong Kong's prestige and caliber to advance their discourse, to give, to give more substance and not just to replicate mm. the efforts in the Middle East or in Malaysia or Singapore. You know, mm. that, that would drive this whole hunger and driven and the enterprise to be more more vibrant. In, in practical terms, you're talking about perhaps a broader view yes. of Islamic finance yes. to deal with issues of equality, issues uh, environment. of fair, fairness, the environment, yeah. distributive justice. But so, so you see that you're actually appealing not only to Muslim and non-Muslim to, to mm. engage in a discourse, mm. which is still uh, uh, economically viable. Mm. I mean, uh, you're, you're not discounting the issue of profitability. Uh, you know, I mean, Al Gore started mm. this whole mm. issue of generation investments, uh, very rigid on the issue of uh, protecting the environment. Mm. But at the same time, it's not, it is, it is uh, profit making. Mm. I mean, otherwise, you know, businessmen wouldn't talk to you otherwise. Mm. Okay? Okay. Right? Right, okay. Thanks. And just perhaps one last issue quickly, just as part of that, on the subprime issue and the, because the US is 
Firstly, do you think the US is going to plunge into recession and do you think Asia will catch a cold as a result or do you think we can weather this mm. latest storm? I am of the view that the, uh, um, the measures uh, by the Fed uh, would only help to ease the problem temporarily. Mm. Uh, I think all the fundamentals uh, seen uh, in the US would show to a slowing down. Uh, I am not to be sure the extent of a recessionary pressure, mm. um, which means that would be uh, for the region uh, a, a negative impact on the economy. Now, um, countries with stronger fundamentals and make taking up measures from now to be able to weather the storm. Uh, those who are in a state of denial, and I know the Malaysian economic policy for now, uh, if they could persist on this policy, then they would be very badly uh, hurt mm. and back, uh, affected uh, by this uh, recession or recessionary pressures in the United States. And as I said, uh, it would be premature to assume that we can decouple and delink uh, Asian economy with the United States for the present. Uh, politically, I hope that we can decouple with Bush policies, <laughs> but I think economic realities dictate that we have to, we are still quite relevant. Okay. Okay, okay. excellent. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you, Greg. Okay, thank you.